people who got out of MLMs, what kind of things did you see on the inside that made you want to get out? Herbalife? I like their tea, was a better alternative to drinking energy drinks, still had caffeine and burned 70 calories per cup everyone told me, but I couldn't find any official literature stating that. Cute girl asked me to join up, so I thought why not? Even went to the big once a year seminar in Adelaide. Was super culty. They kept talking about how food didn't have the same nutritional content that it used to because of soil degradation, that bit made sense to me. They kept talking about how Herbalife products were specifically designed to give the body the most optimal nutrition possible everybody kept saying, but again, none of the printed materials seemed to match up with the claims everyone was telling me. Then I asked why each country seemed to have a different formulation for this optimal nutrition. Nobody could answer me. Realized the reason they probably sold an MLM model was because the products wouldn't stand up to competition on the open market. So I skedaddled. Redditors, what made you realize your SO had fallen out of love with you? This is a F up story, but here we go. One time, we were on the train, joking, laughing, making out. And then he asked me so what does come actually taste like? Out of the blue by the way. And I didn't know how to answer that one. But I tried I said well, it's kind of like snot, I guess, trying to find gender neutral bodily fluids, but oh, actually, it's like when you cry really hard and then your tears are salty and it mixes with snot, that's what it's like. And then he aggressively turned his head away, stared out the train window. I asked him what was wrong and he said, The last time I cried was at my grandmother's funeral. He, in that moment, was mad at me. Because I reminded him of his dead grandmother. And associated that memory with his question of what come tastes like. It was the weirdest fucking moment I've ever had with another human being. Ever. I try to be kind, I try to calm him down. But honestly, inside I was dying. We broke up shortly after. To those who no longer celebrate their birthdays, why? 15, I was assaulted a few months before and people wanted to believe him over me. 16, I had no friends. 17, my parents forgot. 18, abusive ex doing abusive things. 19, COVID-19, working isolation wards, too busy to celebrate, and more abusive ex stuff. 20, different XBF, triggered my PTSD and anxiety on purpose, found out after we broke up, and then called me an embarrassment when I lashed out. 21, I'm gonna be too busy with a newborn. I don't want baby things as gifts. I'm happy to accept gifts but I've made it clear that I all I want is gin, chocolate and face masks. Anything labeled to me for baby will be given back, a separate gift for baby is okay obviously. I just want to be left alone with my BF and baby. I've given up trying, I don't want to bother anymore, at this point I'm worried I'ma give myself more trauma. What are some actual disturbing facts about history you know? The US government took thousands of Filipinos from their homeland in the early 1900s and placed them in a human zoo in Coney Island, New York for American entertainment. They forced them to wear their traditional clothing all the time despite the colder weather, performed dances and even made them eat dogs for the audience in order to emphasize that Filipinos are uneducated savages. The Spanish flu killed between 17 million to 50 million, and possibly as high as 100 million people in the, in the 1920s, making it the second deadliest pandemic in the world after the Black Plague. Scientists dubbed it the forgotten flu because it quickly faded from public consciousness due to its spread coinciding with the end of the First World War, the spread of other diseases, and censorship to retain war moral. The Spanish flu also didn't originate it from Spain. Its first reported case was actually in the U.S. However, neutral Spain was one of the few countries openly reporting about the disease at the time, making the country seem like the epicenter of the disease. What made you immediately lose interest in a crush? Had chatted with this girl for several weeks online, we had gone to high school together but hadn't been friends, and hadn't seen each other in about a decade. We reconnected on Facebook, of course, and things started to turn flirty and then downright dirty as we continued to chat. So when I told her I'd be in the area on a vacation in a few weeks, we both were excited to meet up. As soon as she stepped out of the car to greet me, three immediate facts hit me. She was probably 90 pounds soaking wet. And not in a small and cute way, but in a I would likely die if I don't eat something in the next 24 hours way. Looked like she walked off the set of Schindler's List. She was surrounded by a fog of cigarette smoke. I detest the smell of cigarette smoke. She had the absolute worst and most stereotypically grating Bostonian accent. Like nails on a chalkboard. Any one of those who'd be a boner killer, but all three basically tried to invert me. Let's just say we didn't hang out much during that vacation, not did we talk hardly at all after. What's the worst smell you've ever come across? I love in a coastal California town that's struggling mightily with the homeless crisis. 
I work in the downtown region, of my town which for great stretches is within a block of the river that the majority of these unfortunate souls camp. There is one woman who frequents the stretch of sidewalk outside my work, she's very mentally ill and has the worst hygiene I've ever seen. Even though she's Caucasian her skin is dark with dirt and grime. She has this bacteria-slash-parasitic infestation on her head that's visible and causes her hair and skin particles to fall off her head daily. She's gotten help with it once before, including she a bath and a haircut, but around a month later it was back. She has the worst body odor I've ever encountered, I cover my face and try not to breathe when she's near. I've almost deleted this twice already, it feels so awful to write this. It physical hurts to see a human being with such a low quality of life. What's the dumbest reason you got in trouble at school? In high school it was end of the year and most of the students wasn't even coming to school at all. But bringing in a school bag is a requirement in our school. One day I'm just sitting at class, chatting with some of my buddies and teacher walks in. She sits down and reads her book like usual for 25 plus minutes before coming next to us. Where's your book? She says to me. I don't have one. Which kind of student has no book, are you dumb? You're literally coming here to learn, isn't your brain working? She goes on for 10 whole minutes before she says that I need to see the principal. And all this time I was literally shocked because this was one of those teachers who would not care about her students, one time a guy snuck in a pocket knife and proceeded to scratch every single table. The teacher didn't even look at him. It was super weird but the principal was cool with it and just sent me on my way after we awkwardly stared at each other for 5 minutes. So I got suspended because my school bag was empty. No cigarettes, nothing, just empty. What's the worst nightmare you had that you still remember to this day? When I was a kid I'd have these really terrible fevers that would sometimes make me hallucinate. One time I hallucinated that I was laying in bed, sweating up a storm and generally being miserable when the closet started to slowly open, making an awful creaking sound as it did. It took forever to open and I was too scared to do anything but lay there with my eyes barely open, trying to pretend like I was asleep. Inside was a naked human, thing, with no skin, and crouched down near the floor. I remember very vividly how the dim light coming through my window made its raw flesh glisten. It was incredibly gory and disturbing. I felt like I lay there forever, too terrified to even breathe loudly. It slowly crept towards me on all fours in a distressingly animal way. It felt like it took an eternity to reach my bed and when it did I felt like I passed out from sheer terror because that's the last thing I remember. In retrospect it was probably some combination of fever hallucination and sleep paralysis, but gd if I wasn't scared of the closet for a long time after that. Would you be in a sexless relationship? What circumstance would you find acceptable for this? I was in one. Married for 28 years. Her mental health changed and became a bitter person. There was no intimacy for the last 15 or so years but I stayed with her because I thought it was the right thing to do. Then one day in 2019 I got a knock on my back door. It was a sheriff's deputy serving me a restraining order and eviction papers. Get some things together and get out he said. I never laid a finger on her or threatened her ever but she fabricated lies. I told him to talk to her and see who you're dealing with. After about 5 minutes he pulled me aside and told me to file a restraining order on her, I'll call the judge and tell him you're on your way. Both orders got thrown out and I was back in the house in 2 days. They told her to get counseling. Fast forward 2020 she left but would come around when I was at work, destroy my personal effects and damage the house. Refiled the restraining order and am now in divorce proceedings. Last I heard she was in a homeless shelter. I'm 58 she's 63. And I don't give a fuck.